uh, you know, Singapore is not a formal ally of the United States. We are in a rather unique category, a group of one, called the Major Security Cooperation Partner. Uh, part of the reason for that is that Singapore, as a matter of policy, does not have formal alliances. Uh, but we do believe that America has been a constructive, uh, significant presence and a significant pillar of the formula for peace and prosperity in Southeast Asia. Uh, America remains the largest foreign investor in Singapore. In fact, you know, and this was a, a statistic I used to regularly remind President Trump, that America has more invested in Singapore. Uh, I think that number is about 318 billion US dollars. America has more invested in Singapore than it has invested in India, China, and Korea combined. I mean, many people are often surprised at that. And there are more than 5,000 American companies here. And all of them have been doing well. They have been a conduit for technology, for networks, for trade, for access. Um, so again, if you look at the actual numbers, it's done very well. If you look in terms of trade agreements, uh, you might recall that uh, the US-Singapore Free Trade Agreement, in fact, began with a midnight golf, golf. game between Prime Minister Goh Chok Tong and then President Clinton. Subsequently, Mr. Goh and President uh, Bush signed it in 2003. 2004, it came into effect. Since then, our trade with the United States has doubled. Uh, America remains our third largest trading partner. In fact, America is our largest trading partner in terms of services. And if you look both in terms of jobs in Singapore as well as jobs in the United States, uh, which are directly or indirectly related to this economic account, there's no question. This is a vital, a growing, and an account which sometimes I think people don't, you know, don't give enough credit to. Yeah, that's precisely. I mean, one of the very interesting things about uh, countries. Uh, economic relations and foreign direct, uh, direct investment yes. ties with the U.S. because you have companies, whether it's ExxonMobil, whether it's Google, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Amazon, whether it's yes. Coca-Cola, these are big names that people sort of instinctively know as global brands but not necessarily as American brands. Yes. Uh, in, in a strange way, it hasn't added to the U.S.'s public diplomacy, so to speak. Do you, do you, do you agree that therefore it, it is intrinsically more difficult for people to understand the depth of the relationship. Even in the US itself, as you say, some people don't even know how big the, the well, account is. that's true. Part of the reason is, in the United States, there is a thriving corporate business sector which makes decisions on the basis of its own business interests. Shareholders. And shareholders' interests. It is not part of the political or state machinery. And this is actually a good thing. That's the way it is, yeah. Right? It's a good thing that when you're dealing with a multinational, you know that you're going to make decisions on the basis of business and not on the basis of politics. So in a sense, this is a design feature of the American system, and I'm saying that, in fact, it is a good thing. But it often leads to the point where people underestimate the importance of the American corporate sector. And in the case of Singapore, again, if you go back in time, Hewlett Packard, Texas Instruments, uh, National Semiconductor, they were here in the 70s. And that's why in the, by the 80s, Singapore was a world leading producer of electronics. I mean, in a sense, these were the vanguard of our electronics uh, industry. And then you fast forward to today, all the big guys, you know, Google, Amazon, Netflix, uh, they all have data centers or engineering centers here, regional headquarters here. 
uh, huge chunks of digital infrastructure and data centers are all here. So again, you see the economic logic has been there and the fact that Singapore is an attractive place for investments. And by the way, if you recall, even last year, we record, you know, EDB reported mm -hmm. uh, record investments here. Another example of another significant investment, Global Foundries. They make uh, wafers, semiconductors. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've just put in $5.4 billion. It will create at least a thousand high-end jobs. You will be producing, I would expect, something like 1.5 million semiconductor wafers per year. So the point is, American companies were a big part of our industrialization story. They continue to be a major investor and source of technology as we transit into the digital age. So again, the point is people have not noticed, but it's worth emphasizing.